everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com. Tonight, I'll be putting together a budget astrophotography rig to capture a deep sky nebula here in the backyard. While astrophotography is a notoriously expensive hobby, this kit is surprisingly affordable compared to some of the other equipment combinations out there. It would be hard to put together a system this capable for less than I have here. So for those of you in the process of putting together your first deep sky astrophotography rig on a tight budget, I think you'll really enjoy this one. With a nearly full moon and clouds on their way tonight, I have limited time to capture my target, so I'll have to move quickly. I'm going after an emission nebula, the Monkey Head Nebula in Orion. I've never captured this one before, and it should be a good fit for the camera and telescope I'm using. I chose this one because it emits a strong signal in H alpha. This at least gives me a chance at capturing a decent image, even with that bright moon out. I have a big backlog of equipment to be reviewed, so this idea allows me to test two pieces of gear and get them running outside for first light. The catalyst for this whole budget idea is a new intermediate level mount that I think could be a big hit in the astrophotography community. At $760, the Skywatcher EQ AL55i costs about the same as a Star Adventure GTI, but it doubles the payload to about 22 pounds. I've been testing it out in the garage, but this will be my first time using it under the stars. While this certainly isn't a premium strain wave mount, I'm hoping that it overperforms for its price, and I'll be taking a close look at that guiding graph. As for the telescope, the Cyway Boney SV550 makes its debut under the stars tonight. This is a triplet apochromatic refractor with a focal length of 480 millimeters and an F ratio of F6. You can pick one of these up on Amazon for about $730, and that includes the field flattener. This airspace triplet uses FPL 51 glass to produce images that have great color correction. So the reviews say anyway. I'll have to wait for a real test with this scope when that moon is gone and I can shoot with it unfiltered. I've attached one of the most affordable, cooled, dedicated astronomy cameras on the market to it, the ZWO ASI 585MC Pro. I was very tempted to put the larger ASI 533 camera on there, but I committed to the budget idea, and this one holds the top spot in that category. Of course, you could use an old DSLR that would be much cheaper than this camera, but it wouldn't be cooled, and it probably wouldn't be modified for astrophotography. One of the quirks of this little camera is it's pretty small, long and narrow image sensor. I'll have to keep that in mind when framing up my target. The 585 MC Pro is actually a really great match with this telescope in terms of image scale. It's a healthy 1.2 arc seconds per pixel. Now there are lots of ways to run an imaging session, but in my mind, none are easier than an ASI Air and a tablet. I'm using the adorable ASI Air Mini tonight, the cheapest model in the lineup. This is really the best option, especially if you're like me and clear nights are very rare and you need to maximize every clear minute you get. I'll use this little ASI Air Mini to do everything from polar alignment to auto guiding to taking the actual pictures in my imaging plan. Using the station mode to connect to my home Wi-Fi network, I'll have a strong connection so I can sit with my tablet in the basement and keep tabs on what's going on. I'm working on a Mage Archer build that's currently at a level 40, but he'll be at a level 42 by the time I capture the monkey head. For auto guiding, I've got my favorite bare bones set up on there. This is as cheap as it gets. I mounted a 32 millimeter William Optics Uniguide guide scope from the Red Cat to the top of the SV550. Inside of that is an ASI 120mm, a planetary slash guide camera that's never let me down. This combo adds almost no weight to the rig and allows me to take longer subs into the five minute range if I want to. Lastly, I chose a filter that will allow me to collect a decent image in one night under these conditions. If you're lucky enough to live somewhere with less light pollution than me, a Bortle 6, then you can skip the filter altogether, but you'll still have to deal with that moonlight. At about $300, the Optolong L Extreme filter will allow me to collect a healthy signal to noise ratio, even with that bright moon out. There are some cheaper filters out there that have similar qualities to this one, like the SV Boney, 
Cyway Boney duo band filter. I just haven't tried that one. All right, it's time for me to connect all of the cables to this rig and get it ready for polar alignment when it gets dark enough. It's early March, which means that Orion is on his way out for the season, but this object lies just north of Orion, bordering the constellation Gemini. I feel like the monkey head is slightly overlooked due to its proximity to some of those all-star targets like the horse head and the Orion Nebula. So if you're watching this in March and you can still see Orion, give NGC 2175 a try. Man, I've missed this. Well, I must say things are running quite smoothly so far. I can see the monkey head. I framed it up nicely. There's some passing clouds going on out there for sure. It's very cold and hazy, but you know what? I'm shooting through all of that and getting the monkey head here. So it looks like the guiding is at 1.2 right now, which is not bad, all things considered. It was definitely lower than that earlier. It was at uh, 0.7. Uh, so that's looking really great for that little mount. I'm wondering if the sky conditions are really affecting this. If we look at the guide stars, I bet they look all fuzzy. Yeah, it's just having a hard time, I think. And we're down to 1.1. Either way, I've got eight subs so far on the monkey head, eight times four minutes, not a bad start. I'll probably have to head out there in the cold and refocus uh, pretty soon because uh, I've, I've got no autofocuser on there. Oh, Rudy's coming down. Come here, buddy. Over this way. Come here. Rudy, come here. You need to come sit with me. Can you get your spot? Good boy. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this little setup. It worked well for me for a few imaging sessions here in the backyard. The mount is brand new to me. Uh, just a heads up, if you're used to something a little more premium, the sound of it, I don't know if you can hear that or not. It might throw you off a little bit. It sounds like the Skywatcher GTI. And it almost sounds like it's struggling a little bit. So, you know, I used it with the ASI Air and plate solving with the uh, EQ mod cable. Everything worked great, but it just, it just sounds like it's struggling. So I know that these Skywatcher mounts can be picky with the power supply. So the power supply I'm using, the, the adapter is the Celestron branded 12 volt five amp power cable that has worked well for this so just keep that in mind if it's things are going wonky with this mount also i didn't mention earlier that i have the pure extension on here which is super handy for clearance that's an additional cost i think they're like 140 dollars but yeah the, the biggest surprise that i was really happy with is that this 585 mc pro camera is a great match for this 80 millimeter refractor in terms of image scale nice and crisp and sharp this is a really good match here i'm happy with the way this all worked out so it is a budget rig believe it or not you could of course go a lot cheaper than this by getting used gear and getting a dslr and skipping the asi air but this is a full featured very capable deep sky rig and uh, hopefully it was useful for you to see it all put together.